already know that steroids, such as prednisone and corticosteroids, can cause osteoporosis and fractures. So why is it a surprise that steroid inhalers, things like Advair and Simbicort, can have the same effect? Yeah, it really shouldn't be a surprise, but I think the thinking was is if you give it topically and it goes directly where the problem is, so if you inhale it, it goes right into the lung, that it's going to be absorbed locally and there's not going to be any systemic effects. But we already know that just putting things on our skin can be absorbed into the bloodstream. Well, we forget about things like that or we never learn them. Uh, we know that the skin, for example, will absorb 10 times as much progesterone than if you take it by mouth. And when it came to the steroid inhalers, we thought that if you inhale them, that they would just go right to the lung and that was the end of it. But we were wrong. And so now we're looking at the side effects of what we see with things like the corticosteroids, things so like going, prednisone so it's and prednisolone. Going to the bone. <laughs> it's going to lots of places, it's going to the whole body. I mean, the effects that steroids have on us are profound, and we'll so, get to those in a minute. So I guess it's okay for somebody to do it, though, if it's just once in a while when they're having an asthmatic attack or their COPD is, is extremely mm -hmm. stressful where they can't catch their breath. But maybe there's other things that people could do when they're not in an emergency situation? Well, you don't want to wait until there's an emergency. What you'd like to do is prevent things from happening in the first place. So, you, sh you first of all, you don't want to get COPD, emphysema, okay, chronic lung disease, or asthma. And what can you do to not do that? You have to protect your lungs immensely. So, COPD is chronic obstructive pulmonary, pulmonary. disease. That's right. So if you have that and you're wheezy, you have to do something about it. But the way we go about it in Western medicine is let's do the fastest thing we can do to make people feel better, which is a great idea. But what it leads to is using drugs that will suppress symptoms but always have side effects. And now we're finding out some of these side effects are much bigger than we anticipated. So what can a person do if they have COPD? Mm -hmm. I mean, the cat's already out of the bag. What, uh -huh. what do they do to treat it if they don't use steroids. You can still go back. You may need to use steroids and they may be life-saving and I use them in my own practice in certain settings. When somebody's wheezing bad enough and they can't exchange oxygen and carbon dioxide like we need to, that's a medical emergency and people die every year from that. Well, I guess what we need to do is to look for the cause. Like, for example, if it's asthma or if it's an allergy, you'd mm -hmm. probably want to get rid of the allergen not expose yourself to it or mm -hmm. get an air purifier or something. All right. So you're answering the question you asked me, which is what do you do to try and prevent those illnesses from being there? Yeah, but if, the you already thing, ha if you already have something yes. like emphysema, I guess what you'd do is you'd try to stop smoking if you did smoke. Well, you try and stop but, the process of emphysema from getting worse or the process of asthma from getting worse. And like you said, cleaning up the air is a very big thing to do. You can't clean it up outside, but you can clean it up inside. So you can have healthy filters. You can use a HEPA filter, which will take a lot of those chemicals out of the air. You can make sure that you don't have any allergies, uh, like cats or dogs or whatever you're sensitive and to. And not use fragrances and the fire retardants and all the chem exactly. air room sprays. And so all the there's a lot you inside. can do to decrease your exposure to it. Uh, I think the filters, particularly when you're looking at your air ducts, People don't realize this, but if you clean your air ducts about every 10 years, you'll fill up four or five big garbage bags with dust that's up there that collects all this stuff that you may be sensitive to. So the first thing is common sense. Find out what you're allergic to. Get rid of the stimulus. Then we can look at why is the immune system as hyperactive as it is and what can you do to stop that. And there's actually a lot. And much of what happens in our lungs in terms of wheezing and allergies is related to our immune system where? In our digestive tract. That's probably Way a down there <laughs> when we're breathing way up here. And the reason that's that way, there were some wonderful studies done at University of California, San Francisco in the Department of Pediatrics, where they looked at the role of probiotics in preventing allergic problems like asthma. And it works like this. If you're inhaling a pollen of some kind or some kind of substance you're allergic to and it gets down in your lungs, your lungs have this wonderful cleanup system in it. They're called cilia, the little tiny hairs. And every 20 minutes, they wash out the whole lung as long as you haven't destroyed them with pollution or smoking or something like so that. you're kind of like coughing them up a little. You bring them up. It comes up and you clear your throat. And what do you do? You swallow it. Goes into when the you gut. swallow it, there are immune, there are, are, are cell, there are bacteria down there that are like sentries. 
And these are the friendly uh, microbes like the lactobacillus and bifidobacter that are the usual microbes that live down there in large amounts. And when they're functioning and healthy, when uh, something like a, a piece of pollen or something that's innocuous for most people comes into the lung, they examine that pollen. They send chemical messengers to the immune cells in the intestinal tract. They attack and get rid of that? No. They say, don't attack and get rid of pollen because it's not going to hurt you. Oh, unless you're allergic to it. Well, even then, you know, that's oh. a mistake when it happens. Oh. If a pseudomonas comes down, there are some other kind of bacteria that's dangerous. They recognize that that's a problem. Then they send chemicals to the gut and say, now attack those, but don't attack the pollens and the dust and the mites and the things like that that are, that are in the environment. Two-thirds of our immune system is where? It's in the gut. When that happens and we have the immune reaction occurring because we have uh, inappropriate uh, responses from the immune cells in the gut because those sensory cells aren't doing their job right, it causes the gut to become more permeable. And when the pores in the gut get bigger, you have the so-called leaky gut syndrome. And you can look that up on the side here. Just put in leaky gut syndrome in the search box, and you'll be able to learn all about it, whether you're a member or not. And then you'll see that when the pores open up big and lots of chemicals or substances that are undigested can now come into the gut, it sets the stage for hyperimmune problems to develop because those substances should not come across into the gut. The immune system recognizes them as foreign, and if there's a cross-reaction between something that comes across the gut and something in your skin or your lungs or some other part of your body, it sets the stage for something like asthma or eczema to develop. So what you're saying is, is that these particles go through the, in, the lining of the intestine into the rest of the body. In, in large amounts, and they get first to the immune system in the gut because it's right there on the other side of that membrane. And when it sees that coming in, it starts making antibodies against it, which, you know, because it's foreign. And if that cross reacts with a protein that's someplace, in our, someplace else in our body, that sets the potential up for an immune problem like asthma. So when you see that happening, like the good people at UCSF have said, probiotics are one of the things that you want to use there. But there are also things that you might want to use to help calm down the immune system. There are lots of ways to do that naturally. People have low vitamin D levels, for example. There, there are setups for that because we know you have altered immunity that tends to cause uh, problems like autoimmunity. Uh, so fix the leaky gut, use probiotics, do something to support getting rid of the things that we're sensitive to. And the next thing you know is you may not have a problem uh, with asthma or with another allergic condition. So that's the answer to your question. It's kind of a long answer. But it's a little bit complicated. And, and really it's pointing out that steroids should be used for emergencies. They shouldn't be used for chronic conditions because they cause too many problems. But don't be afraid to use it if you are having an emergency. If your doctor has you on it, use it. But bring it to your doctor's attention. What else can I do, doctor, to try and keep me from needing all these doses of steroids? And if your doctor doesn't know, find one that does because other, it's important. The other thing is is that um, steroids aren't the only drugs that can cause osteoporosis. There know? are a lot of others, but before we get to those, and we'll get there in a minute, what are the problems with steroids? You need to know that. It's not just that your bones are going to become thin and cause osteoporosis. I think that's one of the reasons why the non steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs became so popular because they thought, well, those might be safer than steroids. That would be one of the reasons. To not be very safe. Well, here are the problems <laughs> with steroids, and that's why we're talking about uh, not wanting to use NSAIDs or, or, or drugs of any kind. But for prednisone and prednisolone and, and many of the other brands of stero corticosteroids, you're looking at heart rhythm disturbances that can be fatal, congestive heart failure. You can even have cardiac arrest. There are problems with acne and hemorrhages in the skin and thin skin and poor healing. And while steroids are wonderful anti-inflammatory drugs, they delay healing. And so if you use them, for example, for discs or joints, you use them a couple times, you run the risk of having that joint deteriorate. You may also have problems like tendon ruptures or loss of muscle mass because of the negative uh, uh, nitrogen balance. People like Bo Jackson, you know, the football player that was so, such a sensation, was probably on steroids and he had aseptic necrosis of his hip 
which means he had to have a hip replacement. He couldn't he probably play was getting it injected, huh? Probably was. And then you have all kinds of psychiatric problems, anxiety and depression and psychosis and convulsions. I mean, these are these steroids are very dangerous drugs. And you, ulcers too, huh? Ulcers of the GI tract, you bet. And problems <laughs> with a, a face that starts to get moon-shaped and with a hump in the back. You really don't want to be taking steroids on a regular basis. So what do we do? We have to find a way to deal with it in a more safe way, and that's what we're suggesting. So that's your answer to the problems with uh, why don't we want to use inhaled steroids or steroids in any way unless it's the only thing we have as a solution. Yeah, so try to see if you can figure out what the cause is, if, if you can, you know. Do what you can do. Deal with that. Take your own responsibility. Find a doctor that's preventive, who knows how to help you to lower your risk uh, for developing uh, side effects and complications from, uh, from your disease. And stay off of those drugs. Like Vicki was saying, there are a lot of drugs like Dilantin and heparin and the proton pump inhibitors like Nexium and Asifex. And the, or acid reflux and also exactly. some of the antidepressants are too. And things like Avandia, okay, and Actos. And diabetics. And there are lots of drugs that create these problems. So take responsibility yourself. Find a doctor that knows prevention. Do what you can to avoid the things you're sensitive to. And just maybe you won't need that steroid in here.